Garden of Remembrance Audio Description Introduction Shot in the Garden of Remembrance on a bright sunny day, sun glints off the blue and green tiles of the reflecting pool with its sunken mosaics of ancient weapons. The poet sits here on a wooden bench with the garden coming into the first bloom of spring. The Garden of Remembrance is dedicated to all those who gave their lives in the cause of Irish freedom. It was opened in 1966 on the site created from the uppermost fifth of the Rotunda Gardens. It was in these gardens that the volunteers were founded by Owen McNeil on the 25th of November 1913. The garden was designed by Dahi Hanley, winner of the public competition that was announced in 1946, although the project was not completed until the 50th anniversary of the Rising. Hanley later became Dublin's city architect. The main focal point of the garden is a bronze statue of the Children of Lear by Oisín Kelly, which was added in 1971. This extraordinary vision of painful birth was controversial in its day for drawing on legends considered to be pagan. In May 2011, during her state visit to Ireland, Queen Elizabeth II laid a wreath at the Garden of Remembrance in a gesture of reconciliation. Thomas McCarthy was born and raised in Capoquin, County Waterford, in 1954. He has published a substantial body of poems, as well as a collection of autobiographical essays and two novels. McCarthy is a poet primarily concerned with politics and family, and he is regarded as one of the most important Irish poets of his generation. Garden of Remembrance These stones report for duty in story after story. The garden, a cistern of unsweetened water, times patina burnished by an effort to remember. Such effort renewed at each national anniversary where seagulls glide over the field of slaughter to uncover another trail of poems. Time is a hoarder that gathers us together behind the box hedge to remember glory, to define a lost cause or a cause renewed at the hour of remembrance. We remember our prayers and the seagull's rage, so careful now, now so conscious of the past, that we may not create yet more victims. What lasts in a republic is the living, and so, in this age, I remember the living on this cold, grassy ledge. Our remembrance is a form of theatre, as each remembrance is in every nation. An eternal flame burns elsewhere, and cenotaphs hold heroic names. Remnants of us pepper each Normandy beach, and poppies grow up out of our bones. But here, I think of the one nation the poets imagined, and think again of the two states we're in, a state of mystical borders and broken spears left by a silent procession of things left unsaid. It's not that our cowardice has deepened, or not cowardice, not that, but an indifference yet unchallenged, an indifference to the innocent dead that creeps along the wall of memory as moss or ivy muffle traffic noise or mask all heroic loss. A shuffle of wet tiles, history's lovely aquamarine. All the weapons lie abandoned after battle, like the leaves of Cecil Oak, Dar Gaelic, that scatter in a sudden burst of wind. We seem drawn to history, fatally, the way troubled families want to pace across the same old ground in the hope of comfort from what comes round. I find an empty bench where history doubled back and came to life in a fantasia of warm metal. Oisín Kelly's mythic swan children now seem like children abandoned in a refugee camp or great famine arms hanging loosely in great bronze petals. After all the troubles, politics wants to make peace with art, but memory is immovable in a stiff breeze. James Connolly's beautiful life, the high aesthetic of Peirce, the gift of three buttons from Con Colbert's volunteer uniform, Thomas McDonough's verse. Listen, in this remembering place, I pick strange names to add to the forgotten dead. 
Willie Redmond explaining how at the Ulster line in front of Plug Street the Southerners arrived and words of love between two Irelands were said before slaughter followed the young. And Harold Mooney of the RAMC, his shattered left thigh, should remind us of how the unsung are left to die in a free state of dying slowly. All their untold stories haunt me still. Permit me to remember the dead on the wrong side of revolution, the part they played. Mothers from another continent come here to rest. Memory is a kind of cradle. Memory is a giant beach in a sunlit meadow. I watch a new migrant child reach into this restored reflecting pool, his outline traced in a cruciform pool of disturbed shadows. What can he know, this child of worldly exile, of the purpose of this city centre park? How can you or I propose a better Ireland, a safer shelter in the quiet meadow? Here in this Irish world, in the last place where God found us useful, we have a duty to make a nest, not an ill-advised pageant or a national barricade. When the midday sun breaks through, my eyes rest on harp and acorn, on trumpet and bronze hands, on things a family without our history understands.